Uh, but before I end this off, I have we have two more things to do. We want to check out the prologue and the Ana thing. So this might this might take a little bit, but let's see how this goes. Good evening. Well, at least one of my employees showed up. Huh? What about Gil? He mumbled something about holes and pests and asked for a couple of days off. Business as usual, then. Not quite. How so? I mean us, not Gil. Business will be a tad different through the weekend. We got booked. That's a new one. Who made the booking? Oh, is this the the bunch of dogs that pissed all over the bathroom and we forced Gil to clean it up? The Safar Toy Company. They make toys for dogs. It's their anniversary or something like that. We usually don't reserve the bar. Why do it this time? The clients are adorable. Excuse me? You'll see. Anything special I should know? They'll give you a ticket to trade in for any any drink they want. Just do your usual thing. Fair enough. I'll be in my office. Call if you need me. Sure. Well then. I'm just gonna keep putting on Skyline. I don't care. I love the song. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Lord Pumplerump. Um, excuse me. I'll have a grizzly temple. Hello? A dog. A talking dog. A are you with the Safar Toy Company? Yeah. Did I arrive too early? No. The clients are adorable. Son of a bitch. A grizzly temple, right? Coming right up. Yep, sure is. One grizzly temple. Nope, not Flandergee to Karmatrine. Here you are. Thanks. Huh. This is gonna be a long weekend, isn't it? Ariel Wienerton. Hey, is this the Bronson extract? Is the Bronson extract here produced using organic roots? I don't know that information. Anyone I can talk to about that? Here? Right now? No. But you should have that information on hand. Every BTC certified bar is no different from a fast, fast food chain. We get the same supplies as everyone else. Ask BTC officials if you want to know. But you should... But we don't. But... Saying that we should over and over is not going to change reality. Give me something with lots of Bronson Extract, then. Okay, something with lots of Bronson Extract. Two, two, one... One, three, five, six. The one with six. I believe that was either a moon or a Mars blast. Mars blast, okay. And we blend it. And give it to the dog. Here. What the hell is this? Your order. And this is what Bronson Extract tastes like? Sorta, yeah. Well, fuck that noise. It's not worth the effort. <sighs> no, it's not. Hey, Deal, what's going on, man? Excuse me. Thank God, a person. Well, as much of a person as the designated driver can be. What I mean is, why are there so many dogs? Why dogs? Why? Well, the Corgis created created the Safe Art Toy Company, and they've been doing a great job, so... A company run exclusively by dogs. Really. And a good one at that. Their only problem is that they have not-so-discreet preference for hire, hiring Corgis exclusively. Why? Something about being more comfortable around their own kind. Are you with them? Well, I do prefer Corgis, but... No, I mean, are you working with them? Yeah, well, I'm only here because the law requires at least one humanoid on payroll. Does the law really cover such scenarios? Why take a job like this? Because it means I'm surrounded by corgis all day long. Designated driver woes aside, it's the closest thing to heaven. Although, to be fair, I'm not much of a drinker anyway. I see. Well, to each their own. Are you gonna drink anything? Do you have anything non-alcoholic? Let's see what I can fetch you. Did you intend to make a pun? A pun? Never mind. Fetch. Yeah, I get it. 
Well, something non-alcoholic, so something without commentary, and well... Bleeding Jane, why not? It's right here, it's the one that popped up. There you go. Here. Thanks. You sure this isn't alcoholic? Pretty sure. Okay. Listen, I need to know. Is it really going to be only corgis today? Is that all I'm gonna do all night? Serve the same kind of dog over and over? The vast majority of them are Pembroke, Pembroke Welsh corgis. There are a couple of Cardigan Welsh corgis. But the relationship between the two breeds is a tad... difficult, so the Cardigans weren't invited. So yeah, I guess we'll be serving the same kind of dogs all night. No, I mean... Isn't there some other human I might talk to today? There's a woman on staff, but she couldn't come today. That would be Betty! Oh boy. Is that a problem somehow? It's not really a problem. We've survived worse than this. Like that time when an AA meeting uh, came here asking for non-alcoholic stuff only, but just thinking about the fact that I'm serving drinks to dogs, that at some point all the choices in my life led to me serving drink to a group of talking dogs. It's one of those moments that makes you want to stop and rethink where your life is going. Do you perhaps not like this job? I do! I love every second of this job, but dogs! It's like a fashion designer suddenly realizing he's been deciding edible underwear. I still don't see what your problem is with dogs, but I'm not going to force the subject. Well, I'm going to try entertaining myself for a bit. The stuff we're playing pool is underneath the table. There are also darts in the box next to the jukebox. Great, thanks for the information. Call if you need another drink. Sure. Lady Banner, huh? I'm feeling happy, so I'll give it everyone a round. Actually, it's a free bar. I won't let you spoil my mood. I want a fringe weaver. Coming right up. There you go, all aged and mixed. One fringe weaver. Here you go. Still an awesome day. Dragon fucker? <laughs> what? Is that really this guy's name? Are you... Hmm. Yo, what's an alpha male gotta do to get some service? What may I serve you? Beer. And quickly. Coming right up. Why is that his name? I'm so... <laughs> Here you are. Damn, you're a slow piece of shit. Hey boss, what was the opposite of deja vu again? Jamais vu. Yeah, that. Are you having a premonition? Something like that. The dog felt uncannily familiar. Are you bored? Not really. I was playing with the darts a bit ago. I thought about playing pool, but all the other clients are. Thumb challenged. Sorry if this sounds rude, but why was the dart box so dusty? You're the first person in a year or so I've been here that has actually... Uh, played, played with darts. I think even my boss forgot they existed. Uh, by the way, how are the dogs' as clients? We've had worse. Have you had someone come in and gnaw chairs to pieces? Yes, she was testing out her new mechanical teeth. She got banned from entering any BTC bar after that. With anecdotes like those, you'd think serving dogs would feel totally normal. You'd be wrong, because even then, we were talking about humans. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've served a dog or two in my time, but they usually come in with someone. And they never talk. Now that I think about it, are these drinks bad for the dogs? Now you worry about that? But no, they aren't. Only the cappuccino monkeys are at risk if they drink these chemicals. Anyway, you want anything to drink? Surprise me, but keep it non-alcoholic. Sure. Um... Yeah, sure, give him a sunshine cloud. Here you are. Thank you. This might sound weird to ask, but they talk through their collars, right? That's right. How do they work? It's not too hard, really. They're just translators. They read the dog's brain and turn their thoughts into words. Do keep in mind that today's dog breeds have more cognitive capacity than their ancestors. 
if you put the translators on dogs from a decade ago, they wouldn't work like they do now. Yeah, I read something about that once. Another question, why do they wear those small tuxedos? It's good for PR. You don't say. Well, it'll be a bit before we go for the day. Any other questions? Yes, why the fuck do these dogs want to get drunk? They see humans do it and they think it might be fun. Just like teens, then. Now, if you'll excuse me. Satan's helper! I see. What can I serve you? Moon! Excuse me? Moon! A moon blast? Moon! A big moon blast? Moon! Alright then. This dog wants a big moon blast. Okay, one big moon blast coming right up. Okay then. <laughs> Here you are. Moon! Was that a good moon or a bad moon? This guy's speaking in pig Latin, huh? Pesky furball. A um Arabicasse Picasse Lisbe. Crevice spike, okay. A crevice spike? Sure. Uh, Oye Understandue M.A. I was a kid too. I'm no good at Pig Latin. I don't understand how people are able to just say stuff like that on the fly. But, uh... I recognize it. Here, hey. Hank's day. All right, one more drink before we wrap things up. What do you want? I'm not picky. Give me anything. Of course. Anything, he said. Well, <laughs> this was the first thing I clicked on. I was going on autopilot here, so have a crevice spike. <laughs> there you go. Here you are. Thanks. So, what exactly do you do? Sorry if it's rude to ask. I guess I am what people call an office boy. My duties usually involve looking for things, answering a few calls, that sort of stuff. But this being a dog-run company, there are a lot more responsibilities. Like getting stuff off of shelves and opening windows. At least they pay well. I see. And how did you end up in that position? Where did you get that offer? My neighbor is the owner of one of the dogs. He told me they needed thumbs. Figures. They are celebrating the company's anniversary, right? Yeah, five years ago, three corgis became dissatisfied with the quality of existing dog toys. So they founded this company. They got the money from their owners, if I remember correctly. I can see that happening, somehow. The STC is the second biggest dog co toy company in the world. Fun fact. They started as safe our toy development. Ain't that unfortunate. STD. <laughs> Hello. Hmm? The bar's favorite sweetheart has arrived. Why are you quiet? I'm waiting for the audience's cheers to stop. This isn't a sitcom. Ah, honey, how innocent. Um, excuse me, you are... I'm the lovable Dorothy Hayes, at your ser- Wait, you're a Lilum. Not at your service, then. <laughs> Don't be rude to the other clients. She's kind of a regular here. Kind of? I've been coming here religiously for the past three months now. Three months! I come here to see your charming face, and you say I'm just kind of a regular? For shame, honey. For shame! I'm sorry, I guess. Nothing a free drink won't solve. Won't do. Huh? You playing hard to get? Even if I wanted to give you a drink, we're booked for the whole weekend. Don't you think you should at least put a sign out front or something? Hey, I only found out myself just a few minutes ago. She can have one of my tickets if you're okay with it. I see no problem. 
Oh, you're so sweet. If you were at least 40% organic, I would give you a discount. Discount? You don't need to know. So, who booked you? This guy? The Safe Our Toy Company. What do they do? We, um... They create dog toys. Oh, lovely. It's also run by dogs. Oh, don't joke like that. You think I'd kid about something like that? You mean that if I turn around, I see dogs? Yeah, didn't you see them when you came in? I just entered without looking anywhere else but the bar. You look troubled. I'm not too much of a dog person. I even charge extra if my clients want it doggy style. Doggy? You don't need to know. I'm gonna take this ticket and trade it in next Monday. I'm leaving right now. The ticket would have expired by then, though. She looks like the kind of girl that will hold you to your promise regardless. Is it that obvious? Well, I have to gather the cabs outside. Keep it up, bartender. Good night. Yeah, you too. Good night. Come again. Alright, sirs. The night's over. You have kennels you need to return to. All done? Yeah. Boss, how do you end up being booked by dogs? I know some dogs myself. Huh. And you told me we're booked the whole weekend, right? That's right. Please bear with it. We're all doing our part after all. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta go for today. Bye. Take care. Alright, and we're doing the next day. This is a lot longer than I would expect it I expected it to be, so this might be its own video, but we'll we'll I'll figure that out later. Anyway, good evening. Day two of serving dogs. Are you ready? No. Cheer up. No. That attitude won't make things easier for yourself. Serving dogs won't ease things either. Have you heard anything from Gil? Nope, but he should be having fun wherever he is. Also, did you know we had darts? Yeah, I did. Why didn't you tell me? Because that's the kind of stuff you should just assume. A target board usually comes with a set of darts. Do you like darts, boss? Not particularly, but now I owe an apology to someone. Anyway, call me if you need anything. Sure. Well then. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Hey, it's Betty. Oh, hey, can I have a big beer, please? Thank God, a human. Sure, coming right up. Yep, I will definitely give Betty a big beer. There you go. Here. Thank you. May I ask what you do for these dogs, Miss... Um... Beatrice, but everyone calls me Betty. And why do you need to know that? If you've been stuck with dogs all day, you'd also be curious when a human walks in. Fair enough. I'm their veterinarian. They're all your clients? Yeah, company-issued vet. I mean, I have my own office, but it's in their building. So you're Betty the vet- Oh, cram it. <laughs> Betty the vetty? Sorry, not in the mood for puns right now. I'll keep it in mind. Anything else I might need to avoid bringing up around you besides puns? Enhancements, but that's harder to shove in the conversation in the first place. Noted. What do you have against enhancements, anyways? They're unnatural. They go against the very idea of human evolution. Alright. Hmm. But there's a certain... wall that humans can't cross without enhancements. It's not like having something replaced will automatically make you an expert in things. If anything, getting an enhancement sets you back until you get used to it. Yeah, but it just makes things too easy on paper. Anyone with money can replace their body parts and call it a day. But you have a point. Skill doesn't ship with enhancements. At least, not yet. Sorry for the outburst. I have my story with enhancements. Oh, I don't mind. It's way more entertaining than serving drinks to talking dogs. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of which... That's my job right now. Do you want another drink? I'm fine for now. Call me if you need anything. Sure. Worm Frigger. Hey, have you seen a red dot? I've seen many things in my life, but a red dot? Not today, no. Do you have any red drinks? Red drinks? Yeah, the drink might know something. 
Right. A red drink. Do I... Hold on, I need to read these descriptions, because I don't actually... Nothing but mammals. Traditionally brewed beer. Say the name of the... Let's drink. I would assume Bleeding Jane, because bleeding. Bloom Light, also something with something with a lot of uh, Edelhide might do. Green Blue. Champagne served in a cup. It'll knock the drunkness out of you. A couple of these make your tongue feel velvety. Drinking eth ethylic alcohol. PG rated shows. Favorite beer, okay. This one's kind of unbearable. Gut punch, it's supposed to mean. Okay. One of these enough to leave your face red like the actual planet. No thermometer was harmed. No relation to the Hadron Cannon. The sprink does not represent the opinions of the bar pianist or its associates. It was originally called Pretty Woman. It doesn't burn too hard. They used to actually sprinkle. Wait. Nope. Sweet, light, and fruity. Old chocolate milk. Pile driver. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to go with Bleeding Jane, however, I'm also going to just look at the color of the Bleeding Jane when it's made, and if it's not red, I'm not going to... God, okay. Yeah, that'll do. Here. Thanks. Okay, punk, hear me out. You're going to tell me where that red dot went, or I'll drink you. I'm not bluffing. I'll drink you all up. Bangkok bastard, huh? Those damn Pomeranians, they think they can come over and take our jobs. Excuse me? We've been getting some serious media attention because the company only hires corgis. Must be slow news day. But you know what I say? It's good that we don't hire anyone else. We don't need more races ruining our workplace. Get the fuck out of my bar. <laughs> I play this game for many reasons, but racist dogs? IS NOT ONE OF THEM! GET OUT! Next thing you know, they'll be asking us to hire cats! Wouldn't other races bring new skills to the company? SHUT UP! What do you know? Now give me a bad touch. <coughs> Alright. A bad touch for the dog. Mm-hmm. Harry- nope. <laughs> I misread four commentary and it's four Flanagan. Okay. There we go. That's a bad touch. Here. <clears throat> Racist dogs. What are the odds? Wait, if I can't tell the differences between them, does that make me racist too? Would it matter if you're racist against racists? Jill asking the real questions. Hmm. Bartender, please stop dozing off. I need booze. Sorry, what can I get you? I'll have a Zen Star. Sure. Yep, I can certainly give you one of those. This one's easy to remember what you need. Just four of the all. And then you mix with ice. Here. Thank you. Something on your mind? Willing to lend an ear? It's in the job description, kind of. Alright then. So you mentioned the thing about talking dogs. I thought... People throughout the ages have always dreamt about talking to animals. Never mind the fact we could always understand their body language. Uh, now that we understand them, what do we find out? They're just furry, adorable little office workers. Actually, scratch that. I've yet to meet a furry office worker with half the charisma of these little guys. Moving on. You've met furry office workers? I've seen my share of the world, bartender. Sounds like you're tired. It's fleas and tick seasons. I am tired. So you're... Ticklish. Don't. You. Dare. Ahem. Well, this whole free bar thing is nice though, I guess. It would have been nicer if we actually had time to get properly ready. What do you mean? I found out about the booking yesterday as I was getting ready. Did the client ask for something special? Was there something I needed to know about them? My boss didn't specify anything. All she said was to me was pretend like it's any other day. That 
was a screw up on our end, sorry. They were desperately looking for a place to celebrate. I was actually surprised to find out they got a place. Why all the sudden plans? Did they forget their anniversary or something? We found a place, but the cardigans were the ones that hired it. Then some stupid argument arose and the cardigans decided they didn't want to have any Pembrokes at their party. I swear to God these dogs are like annoying little suburban kids. What are these cardigans I keep hearing about? Oh, just another kind of corgi, except with different fur colors and a slightly different attitude. All of this is so silly. I've seen dogs play with cats, dogs play with other dogs, and dogs mating with dogs twice their size. Well, that's what happens when you have dogs mimicking their owners. I mean, that's the reason they are in a bar in the first place, but I guess the media focus on Pembrokes probably didn't help. <sighs> well, if you'll excuse me, I have dogs too. Yeah. Hm? Oh yeah, yeah, do your job, don't mind me. Tortilla Pope. Hey, buddy. Hello. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Um, you? I am? Whoa, thanks, buddy. What can I serve you? Well, a big sunshine cloud would be nice. Coming right up. Four of these, four of these, all on the rocks and blended. Mm -hmm. There you go, big sunshine cloud. Aw, oh, ain't you a cutie? Loopy doopy poo. Woof. Ku rage? Ku rage? Yeah? Ko rage? I don't know. You know what I hate, man? What do you hate, dog? Cabbages, man. They are like lettuces that decided to go to the gym. They think they are a big deal because their leaves are harder. Guess what? I don't like them. Calm down, dog. Do you want anything? For cabbages to not exist. I meant to drink. Oh, I'll have a big grizzly temple then. I can do that. The mutt wants a big grizzly temple. Uh, here we are. Six of these. Six of these. Six of these. And two of these all blended. There you go. Here you go. Chill out for a bit, dog. Thanks, man. <sighs> Bartender? Yeah? Do you have anything sweet? We're talking about drinks, right? Are you hitting on me? If that's how you want to see it. Let me see what I can get you. And make it big. Do you like them big, Miss Betty? It's not the size, but how you sell it. Gourmet food exists for that sole reason. Wise words. She wants a big, sweet drink, huh? I can do that. I have a blue fairy. So we got eight of these. Two of these, all Asian mixed. Here you go. Here. Thanks. You know, I'm curious. What's the weirdest client you've ever gotten? I wouldn't be able to tell you. There are many kinds of weird. Pick the first one that comes to mind. Well, there was this one guy that spent 30 minutes arguing with himself before ordering. That's not that weird. He came in wearing a velociraptor mask and wouldn't stop screaming. He left humming Moonlight Sonata afterwards. Oh, yeah, that's weird. At least he left a nice tip. Speaking of anecdotes, can I ask what's your story with the enhancements? Why the interest? Because it seemed like a personal thing. It doesn't sound like it's a question of ethics. And honestly, I'm really bored. Heh. <laughs> sure, I can entertain you a bit. Back when I was a college freshman, some friends of mine decided to get their hands enhanced. It was around the time we all started practicing surgery. They just wanted to bypass all the practice needed. And so, they hired the shady character who had supposedly hooked them up. I only talked one of them out of it. The others went off with the guy and got their hands chopped off. This is one of those stories that ends badly, I'm guessing. Yeah. Four girls underwent the shady surgical procedure. Two lost their hands, one was left an arthritic mess, and the last died on the operation table. So yeah, I'm not too fond of enhancements. Especially if they're taken in an effort to avoid effort. And this culture of become a, a better automatically with enhancements really gets on my nerves. You know, I can understand that, actually. I get it. That story sounds so familiar. 
Did that shady guy have a bleached mustache and a tattooed black eyebrows? He also talked using a, an electro -laring. larynx. You seen him? No, but I remember news about the police catching someone who was performing illegal surgeries. Never thought I'd meet someone affected by him. It's a small world, isn't it? <sighs> well, I guess I gotta check on the dogs to see if they're fine. Sure, I'll keep serving them booze. Thanks for sharing that story. Yeah, yeah. Accident! Fuck dude, it sure is. Hey man, have you ever felt like time is moving too fast? Every day of my fucking life. Tonight, I'm feeling up like it's not moving by fast enough. Lucky you. Well, they say if time feels like it's going by too fast, you're having a good time. What can I serve you? I want a bad touch. <laughs> Sorry, coming right up. The dog wants a <laughs> bad touch. That hurt my throat a bit to do. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Here we go. Here you go. Have a good time out there. Maybe you're right. Thanks. Dog five. Is this the fifth dog we've seen tonight? I have not been keeping count. Bartender. Hmm? One Brantini, please. Sure. I need a Brantini. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One aged mixed. Here. Excuse me. The beer mat's dirty. Sorry, I'll change it. Nah, leave it like that. It already ruined the Brantini anyway. <sighs> Phew. Taking a breather? Yeah. Not like I'm that busy, though. Fucking dogs. Anyway, you want anything to drink? No, some dogs gave me drinks already. I'm fine. Oh, alright. Say, bartender, do you like your job? Hmm? I mean, you're not like the usual crop of bartenders. The kind who are always making a big show at a disco or a rave party. Why does everyone keep saying that? <sighs> hey, why are you working as a veterinarian? If you want to change the subject, you can just say so. I just did. Fine. I'm a veterinarian because if I don't do it, who will? I don't trust other vets. I don't feel like they are actually cut out for the job, so I took upon it. I uh, took it upon myself to do it. That's quite the ambition. Speaking of ambition, did you start working here because this is what you wanted since high school or something? That's a whole new can of worms I don't want to open. But no. Life took me here, basically. Why the question? I thought we were exchanging life stories with each other. I was also thinking about the whole risk versus reward thing. These dogs made me an offer just as I graduated. Sometime I wonder if I'd have been better off taking the bigger risks. You know, the whole safe position versus big bet kind of thing. If you're comfortable with the opportunity you've been given, take it. If it's something that's been bothering you for a while, scratch that itch. Wow, you should be a counselor. Nah, it's just cheap advice. Well, I have to take care of dogs. Excuse me for a bit. Actually, we're about to leave already. Oh, really? Yeah, thank you for everything. Don't worry. Thank dog... I mean God! God! Dog gamut. Done for the day, I'm guessing? Yeah. You might want to get some insecticide or something to make sure we're not full of fleas. What does the health inspector think of this stunt? The health inspector is too afraid to come to this part of the city, so I'll assume he's fine with it. Right. Say, boss, you look tense. Really? Weird. So I'll call it a day here. Thank you for your hard work. Mm-hmm. One more day, it looks like. Good evening. You look bummed, boss. Starting tomorrow, there will be no more corgis in our bar. Why wouldn't I be sad? Maybe because starting tomorrow, there will be no more corgis at the bar? I wonder if the Sheba Appreciation Society uh, might be interested in booking us. One problem at a time, boss. Oh, wait, I know someone from the Pomeranian Development Institute. One problem at a time! Still, you've been tense ever since Friday. Are you worried about Gil or something? Trust me, of all my worries, Gil's is the least of them. Put on some music and enjoy the day, won't you? Right. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Bartender, we meet again. Oh, Miss Betty. Hello. And Mr. Corgi Lover. Call me Deal. Deal. Deal? Deal. Wipe that satisfied look off your faces, you two. Hem, what can I serve you today? I'll have a beer. 
I'm not the, the designated driver today, so give me a fringe weaver. All right, coming right up. One beer and one fringe weaver. Certainly, I can do that. There's one beer. And... That's one fringe weaver. Here. Thanks. Thank you. You seem distracted. Has serving so many dogs finally gotten to you? No. Well, yeah, but it's not that. My boss has, a bit, has been acting weird since Friday. Weird how? Romantic weird, drug addict weird, let's hope nobody finds the body in the fridge weird. For starters, there's the fact that she only told me we were being booked moments before we opened. Plus, she seems completely distracted or lost in her thoughts. Like you. Worse. Oh. She's not being herself, and that makes me wonder if something's going on. Like what? Do you run a human trafficking ring in the basement? No, it's probably because the, the bar was closing down, wasn't it? That was something that was being talked about. And I guess this, this is before um, before Jill was told. Like what? Do you ring? Yeah, traffic ring. No, we don't have a license for that. Oh well, thinking about it too much is not part of my job. Can I ask you something about your job? Sure. I've always been curious. What does the BTC need in their bartenders? What do you need to study? And they train you from scratch, so you don't have to study anything beforehand. What does the training involve? It's a lot of etiquette and regulation work. Most of our time, though, is actually spent in simulations. Simulations? Different scenarios involving different chemical hazards, that sort of thing. They want you to be able to respond to every possible situation that might come up involving our ingredients. I mean, the chances for failure are really slim, but it's better to not take those chances. I see. I'll be back with you guys in a bit. I must attend to the other clients. Dogs, that? Oh, sure. Mr. Puff, they are chasing me, man! Who? The cabbages, man! The goddamn cabbages! They are everywhere! They are out for my rump! You're... Never mind. Can I get you anything to calm down? A big blue fairy would be nice. Okay, then. The dog wants a big blue fairy! Mm-hmm. Sure does. All aged and mixed. There we go. Here. Thanks. Very nice of you. Third bark day. <sighs> Something the matter? Nothing a drink can't solve. Not sure about that, but it's hardly my job to preach sobriety. What do you want? Give me a gut punch. Okay. This flea bag wants a gut punch. One, two, three, four, five, one. All aged and mixed. There you go. Here you are. Thanks. Hey, you ever felt guilty for being born the wrong race? <laughs> uh, no. No, I have not. The what now? I've just been hearing so much about how we're racist. I'm wondering... Are you racist? Not really. Do you feel like other corgis might be? Definitely. I mean... Then why worry? It's not like they're calling you racist. You shouldn't take generalizations personally. You might be right. Man, you should have seen the cutie I saw yesterday on the way home. She looked like a cat boomer. She was wearing a mini dress and had this prosthetic eye. <gasps> that... that is Stella! I love her. I love her a lot. I thought you were against people using prosthetics. I'm not against cute, though. Besides, I'm not against prosthetics. I'm only against enhancements. I don't see a difference between the two. Alright, let me put it this way. If you lost an arm and replaced it with a mechanical arm, that does exactly what the older one did. I'm okay with it. But if you lost your arm and replaced it with a gun-loaded super arm from hell, that's something I'm not okay with. Even worse is if you decide to replace your arm because of fashion, or a whim, or to get better at some sport. That's completely not cool. That's the difference between a prosthetic and an enhancement. Replaces, replacement versus uh, enhancement. 
I'm of a simpler opinion about Lilim replaces their factory parts for kicks. Similar opinion. If you think that's going to be an easy way of getting better at something, you're in for a bad surprise. Well, I can see why you think that, but what suggested to you that what she had wasn't an enhancement? If she had bad eyesight, wouldn't that count as an enhancement, even if it fixes it? How does, re rep how does repair reparative work factoring in factor into your ideologies? And they might be enhancements, but they also replace something faulty. Well, uh... Damn it, stop making sense, you piece of scrap. You're weakening my resolve. Having fun? Oh, bartender. That was fast. There seems to be less dogs out today. At least, dogs that want a drink. Yeah, some of them ate their tickets. <sighs> Lovely. I'll be the one dealing with that later. Say, what's your take on the whole enhancement discussion, bartender? My mom had a saying. Anyone can make a chandelier out of their asses. Which somehow means your body, your choices. Yeah, that... Like, I see fully where Betty is coming from, but I agree that it, it's, it's your body as long as you aren't hurting anyone, as Jill is saying. That's fine. It's your, your business. If they are not hurting anyone, I don't see the point in hating them. See, Betty? Hey, I didn't say I automatically hate anyone who has an enhancement. Me being against something isn't the same as me being against someone. I'm not some 12-year-old girl blindingly hating someone because of something like that. Maybe you should practice what you preach. What does that mean? I fear retaliation, so I'm not saying another word. Are you two gonna order anything? I'm fine right now. She's drinking mine, actually. Alright, call if you need anything else. Sure. Let's see. Ow! So much for avoiding retaliation. Poop eater! Yep, that checks out. That's how dogs do. You're not gonna believe me. I was in the bathroom and this other dog was looking at me from the top of the sink. You mean the mirror? No, another dog. I see. What can I serve you? You're not gonna do anything about that other dog on the top of the sink? I'm sure he doesn't want to hurt anybody. Don't worry. I hope you're right. Well, I want something really sweet. Coming right up. This pup wants something really sweet. Uh, there we go. Uh, have a sugar rush. There you go. Here you go. Thanks. Please think about the thing with the other dog on top of the sink. I will, don't worry. Well then, that was quick. Like I said, there aren't too many dogs today. When I heard someone booked us, booked us for three days, I expected more of an attendance. While you were gone, this fellow here said that the Bleeding Jane is better than a pile driver. Please, prove him wrong. All I'm saying is that I don't see the point in drinks that feel more like a kick in the mouth than a beverage. Cheers, bro, I'll drink to that. <laughs> what do you think, bartender? Do you think there's any point discussing non-alcoholic drinks in a bar? In my opinion, people who order a bad touch always make, you gig make me giggle like an idiot, though. That's not an opinion, that's a statement. Oh well. Please serve us either pile drivers or bleeding Janes. We'll decide let you decide which is better. Coming right up. I'm just gonna serve you one of each, thanks. I ain't choosing sides here. People have different tastes and that's okay. If you like a pile driver, you get a pile driver. If you like a bleeding Jane, you get a bleeding Jane. No fighting this way, right? Wow, you're quite the softy. Just kidding, wise choice. No complaints here. How did you two end up discussing that? Well, it started when I told this guy that I wasn't as crazy about the idea of working just for corgis. Why don't you like corgis? They're cute and fluffy and funny, and they just, like, make you smile. Tell me one interesting thing about them. Legends say they were created by a fairy and their breed was raised to fight dragons. Oh, you have to be kidding. No, actually, I heard that one too. Really? Still, I can't see why you're so tired of them. Dunno, maybe because I only ever deal with them at their words. At their worst, excuse me. You've only ever seen them in their happy state. I'm the one running feces samples and unclogging their sphincters if they eat their own owner's dental floss. 
I might be their veterinarian, but they treat me more like a mom and not in a good way. It's like being a gynecologist. After a while, you stop seeing boobs and vaginas. Instead, all you see are issues you must fix. At least they are cute issues. Depends. A gynecologist can't pick, can't pick clients by age or preferences. I was talking about your job. Oh, yeah, that too. Still, I don't think it's so much that I'm tired of them as it is I'm tired of you being obsessed with them. I'm not obsessed, I'm passionate. You sleep with a corgi plushie and have a wall dedicated to photos you've taken at the company. I'm really passionate? Too much passion can become an issue, you know. Speaking of issues, did you talk with the directors about the whole cardigan conflict? I was going to do that tomorrow, when they're all together. But I still don't see why I should be the one doing it. For starters, they don't take me too seriously. Understandable. I don't take you too seriously either. I mean, in the end, they're still dogs. They need someone with a strong, commanding voice. Are you saying I have a naggy voice? No, not your voice. Just your entire demeanor. So I have a naggy demeanor? I'm assuming you two are talking about the whole race conflict. Yeah, this is hurting them more than they think. The company might actually collapse at this rate. Which is terrible, because a couple of those dogs' families are dependent on their paychecks. Doesn't that count as unethical and, um, unusual treatment of animals? It's a bit of a legal gray area. The dogs are doing it willingly, after all. And even if they weren't doing it willingly, the dogs aren't actually being mistreated or exploited. In fact, the company's pretty relaxed. Speaking of relaxed, how's Jurgen doing? He's fine, still complaining about his back, still unwilling to take his medicine. He says that he's not that weak. Who's this Jurgen guy? My guardian. I passed the test years ago, but I couldn't leave him. That's actually commonplace, isn't it? Well, I'm being unable to leave their guardians because they feel too much like family. Now, to be fair, people get attached to many things. Some even get obsessed with inanimate objects. My grandpa loved his car more than any of his sons. The one whose will left all his earthly possessions to his car, right? Yeah, that one. What the hell? How do you become a Lilum's guardian? You fill a form at the Artificial Intelligence Council. Then they do a background check. If they deem you useful, they'll give you authorization. You're given a week's notice before they give you the, all the data about the Lilum you're taking care of. You have to watch over it until it can pass three different personality tests. If the Lilum wants to stay with you after that, that's your problem. So it's like adoption and the lottery all rolled into one. They do that to diversify the possible outcomes. Two Lilum can be of the same model, but they'll grow differently depending on their guardians. What if something happens to the guardian? A new guardian can appeal to the council, stating they're more fit for the position than the original. This happens when a guardian has become unavailable in some way or because you can back up the claims of neglect or maltreatment. You spit out all that information like it's hard-coded in you. I worked in that department for some time before coming to the STC. It's almost a reflex. Are you interested in becoming a guardian bartender? I don't know. I'm just a nerd when it comes to AIs in general. The money they give you for it is not that great, though. I see. Well, time to check on the dogs. Money Shredder, listen here, punk! Sorry, I didn't mean to call you a punk. It's just... I was chasing my tail, and now I'm too hyper to control myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just give me anything. Alright. Safe to give him something sweet? Well, we're giving him a sugar rush, then. This is good. Very good. Very good. Very good! Ah! Huh. No, see, I can see the value of other dog races. Like Pomeranians. Those are nice, but they aren't corgis. Well, yeah, I can understand that. I mean, remember that cute girl from yesterday I mentioned earlier? Yeah. The white knights that was with her? She wasn't half bad either. That would be say! I mean, it was obvious that a tapestry of muscles was hidden under her armor. I prefer more delicate looking girls, though. You can appreciate how something looks, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily your thing. And do you, bartender? Me... what? What dog race do you prefer? That's not the question I was expecting. Not much of a dog person, actually. Do you have any pets? A cat named Four, yeah? He's just a stray I rescued. 
Do you like rescuing girls, too? I'm sure I should making a, be making a witty retort right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say... No. Weird. I've always thought that the rescue fantasy was universal. Why call it four? Four is a Lilum I met some time ago that... Never mind. Pretty lame name, if you ask me. Better than calling it Asshat. I bet when you and four play... You and four play, huh? It's quite the sight, eh? He's so lively, sometimes I fear foreshadows my presence. It's foreshad- Fuck off! <laughs> you guys want to lose consciousness that much? You really need to calm down with the whole pun-hating stuff, Betty. But to move away from this whole foreground... <clears throat> what is this rescue fantasy you mentioned before? You know, the one where wayward, dangerous souls redeem themselves through the power of love? The bad boy who turns away a life of crime? The drug addict girl who lived on the streets and turned tricks until she found a good man worth changing for? It's corny romance cliches 101. Well, you're the one with the shelf full of old lady romance novels. I'll trust you on this. Hey, Fabio the Thirteenth is a national treasure. You don't even like guys. Why do you read all those novels? They let you put yourself in the place of the main character quite easily. Even if said main character is a muscular man, I see no problem. Just, what is your self-image? If I can ask something else, what is it? Why do you hate puns so much? Many people cringe at puns, you know. Yeah, but you react like you have a vendetta against them. They make me feel stupid. Uh, what? When I was a kid, everyone in my house had a penchant for making puns at the drop of a hat. I was the only one who couldn't get them. Years later, I finally got them, and they weren't that funny! They made me feel stupid. All in the name of some terrible joke that wasn't even funny in the first place! I've said this so many times, I might as well just make a recording, but... You need to chill out, Betty. <clears throat> I am chilling out. Just because I complain about stuff doesn't mean I'm not relaxed. I'm not sure that's how it works. Trust me, when I'm tense and angry, you'll know it. I fear the thought. Anyway, I'll go check on the dogs. I'm supposed to be their doctor, and they are being suspiciously quiet. Be careful. You want anything else? I'll have a bloom light, actually. Make that two, please. Sure. He asked for two bloom lights, so I can sure do that. One, two, three, four, one, fuck. One, two, three, four, one, one, two, one, two, three, all aged on the rocks and mix. I screwed it up. <laughs> I'm having a great time. There we go, that's, yep, yeah, there we go, that's one bloom light. Now, three, four, one, two, one, one, two, three, all aged, mixed, and ice. There you go. Perfect. Here. Thanks. Say, you two seem to get along quite well. Well, when you are the only sentient humanoids in the entire company. It kind of happens. Proximity, you know? Sentient? We have a couple of test mannequins and cardbo par cardboard cutouts, so... I see. Seems there's more to it than just that, though. I mean, even if you two are the only ones of your kind, you can still hate each other. Well, I guess I'm one of the few that can stand, Betty. She's a really nice person, but she doesn't sugarcoat things. Yeah, I can see that. You should see her treating those dogs. She becomes so patient and understanding, even if it's only for a little while. The dogs don't call her mom to mock her. Can dogs mock people? I don't know. Even if it's only for a little while. You were eavesdropping? So you can say nice things once in a while. You say it like I'm aggressive, the, I'm, like I'm the aggressive one here. It's nice hearing people say good things about you once in a while, you know? You should take your own advice. Maybe some other time. I'm not a hug box. It's just from the, the term hug box just ruins me because it just remembers me of a time where a friend a friend was streaming. And I forget exactly what, but because it, I think I made like a joke, like 
don't be rude or just saying like something like that. It kind of is like a joke, just like to some playful teasing or something. And some random join and we're just like, oh God, is this a hug box? And I think we, we both just fucking lost it at that. It was so weird. It's why in like one of my night in the, the, the woods videos from a while back, I opened it with like, I opened it with a reference to that, that no one besides like me and my friend would really understand. And, but it was just, it was just something. It was fun. <laughs> so the, just the term hug box just ruins me. Um, a dog in the bathroom got angry at his reflection in the mirror and charged into it. Luckily, nothing bad happened. It just made a dog very confused. How the hell did they get on top of the sinks? They are surprisingly agile, even with those stubby little legs. Oh yeah, I ordered you this. Ah, thanks. Oh, by the way, Betty, how's Veronica? She... Uh, we broke up last month. What? Well, things were not going so well. We got too used to one another. Everything was starting to become routine. We decided to break up before things got better. And why didn't you tell me that before? Why? Did you want your turn at the Betty Mobile? I don't know. I guess I just didn't want to trouble you. And after a while, it stopped feeling like it was something relevant to say. <sighs> Please don't do that again. Try trusting me. Yeah, you're right. You know what bothers me? The fact that asking after someone's health always feels like you're walking on a floor full of glass shards. There's always this chance that the other person is not okay, or even dead. And what started as a legitimately fun moment can go sour. Yeah, you're right. Sorry for not trusting you, you piece of scrap. Don't worry, I understand why you did it. Hey, now that I think about it, you sure hang out with us a lot, bartender. Well, dogs can only be so interesting, and besides, there haven't been as many dogs today. Is my presence unwanted? Not at all, especially since you're the one bringing the booze. You're like those cab drivers that like to chat all the way, but you smell better than most of them. Thank you. Funny thing is that we are unofficially associated with a local taxi line. They're the ones that send drunkards to their homes. You seem to really, really like talking to your clients, like it's the best part of your job or something. It kinda is. I used to sit around in crowded places like malls or bars and think to myself, each and every person here has a story. It's true. It's a humbling experience. Everyone has dreams, fears, and loved ones. If you dig deep enough, you'll realize that the gap between two random people isn't as big as you think it is. In fact, it's quite small. And in this job, you get to hear all kinds of stories. Some people just blurt it all out. Some do it while drunk. To know that no matter how similar they might seem at first glance, no two people are alike. It's fascinating. You could be a powerful information broker with all that knowledge. Nah, not interested. I like to see myself more as a friendly ear rather than someone you need to be wary of. I guess there's still decent folk out there. I'm not decent. You're critically obsessed with dogs! I'll go check if there's any other dogs who want something. Sure. Go ahead. Gruff bucket. Quick! A beer! Okay. He wants a beer and he wants it quick. Alright, Gruff bucket. Here you go. Here. Thanks. Now boom! Why did you break the glass? I made breakfast. Get it? Because you made the drink fast, and I broke it, and... Go. Tough crowd. <laughs> Suddenly, I understand the hate for puns. Hey, bat render. Yeah? <laughs> Your job has a funny name. I... Have I... I don't think I... I don't think I've seen that sprite of Betty before. That's... oh, She's cute. You don't say. How is she already drunk? She drank way less than she did last night. Yeah, but she drank a bottle before coming here. Why? I wish I knew. It's an example of her alcohol tolerance, though. Bra denter. I want to make a toast to my good friend the robot here. Probably the only person... Robot... Thing that can stand by yapping for more than half an hour. Without him, my jobs would be five times more boring and my life two times more meaningless. Cheers! You're not holding a drink. 
Then give me one, Bren uh, Ben Trader. Isn't that your job? I need a beer. A big one. Alright. She sure does want a big beer. There you go. Alright. Cheers. I said cheers. 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 Good. Grumpy went sober and a sweetheart went drunk. It seems like she's been like this since her university years. You make it sound like those were a decade ago. Hem, I can understand liking the taste of alcohol, but what's so good about getting drunk? First of all, I'm not drunk. You're too happy. I'm a happy person. When drunk. <laughs> anyway, that's something you just can't explain. You just like it, your body needs it, craves it. That's called being an alcoholic. I prefer the term alcohol enthusiast. Anyway, humans actively look for things that make them feel lightheaded. Why else would they leave some poison, potentially poisonous foods that, like that weird balloon fish thing? Pufferfish? Why would they eat spicy food or drink fermented milk? Seriously, how crazy does someone need to say, hey, let's eat this and see what happens? Worse yet, they've even found a medicine among all that junk. The one that invented penicillin was probably the worst of them all. Fair enough, but see, that's proof you're drunk. If you were sober, you would just say, hell if I know. Silly robot. Tricks are for kids. And now that I think about it, what kind of robot are you? Lilum. Lilum always sound too feminine. Okay then, what manner of piece of scrap are you? You don't know? Never cared, but now I'm curious. Oh, well, you want to remember it tomorrow. I'm a DT-01D, a social development robot. Is that like the DFC-72S? No, no. DFC-72s are defi- 72s are designed in order to be as physically human as possible in order to blend in with humans better. My line is more tailored for resilience. We are work, Lilum. Why must you be cursed to only one destiny from the moment you are born? You can do whatever you want, silly robot. Follow your dreams. I know, I'm already doing it. Being created or hardwired for one duty only means you're more adept at certain things. Giving robots freedom of choice? That's the whole purpose of the ADN law. Yeah, but you know, you say you're resilient, but you don't look the part. True, I've never upgraded my muscles, but I can stand up to 200 degrees Celsius without breaking a sweat. I was just about to ask that. Lilim can sweat? Do they just like drip oil or something? Cooling agents, yes. I guess that makes sense. You don't, you don't want to overheat your machine so you would, so liquid cooling, yeah? Some computers use that. I doubt it works in the same way, but liquid cooling is a thing. No matter, you're still special to me, no matter what kind of robot you are. Lilum. No matter what piece of shit you are. Speaking of special, how come it isn't legal to marry a dog yet? Excuse me, what? <laughs> Such a bizarre question, it just sobered her right up, right? If humans are allowed to marry robots, Lilum, I meant Lilum. They should be able to marry dogs, too. Abtrender. That's me, I think. This guy here wants to bang a dog. Mock him. Excuse me? I do not. I was just saying that if humans are now allowed to marry Lilum, why shouldn't they be able to marry animals? Uh... Because, first of all, they're not humanoids. What about monkeys, then? And now you want to bang a monkey? I do not! <laughs> There's something that that just I do not reminds me of, and I do oh, it's um computer <laughs> computer respond. Shaggy said zoinks. Scooby said rao. Velma said uh, jeepers, and Daphne said jinkies. No, it was Daphne said jeepers, and Velma said jinkies. What did Fred say? Fred said, fuck, HE DID NOT! <laughs> I love that. I love that little thing. It's so funny. And second of all, dogs, just like many other animals, can't give you consent. But look at these dogs. Sure, they have cognitive abilities of seven-year-olds. That is the problem, seven-year-olds. <laughs> but they can talk, drink booze, and argue. So now you want to bang a seven-year-old? 
We have a regular here who would be delighted to hear that. Stop it! Remember, Lilium human marriages were only sanctioned after the Lilium achieved full sentience. And even then, they used marriage as a way to evolve the collective source. Besides, dogs don't really love us that way. Trying to apply human ideas like marriage to a dog is like... Like trying to feed vegetables to a carnivore, you get me? Says the ex-vegetarian. Why are you only so smart when drunk? I'm not drunk! But anyways, if you want to screw a dog or a chimp, go ahead. Just don't bring marriage or infants into the whole deal. Deal. But if you start even thinking about doing the horizontal mambo with a seven-year-old, please seek some mental help. But I don't want to bang dogs, or monkeys, or seven-year-olds. Well, thank God. Then why did you suddenly start talking about dog-human marriage? It's just, I was thinking about all these dogs in tuxedos, and, and I started picturing a dog in a bridal dress. I mean, just try and picture that. And I'm the drunk one. Wait, I'm not drunk. Why would I say that? Then again, when you get drunk, you only get dizzy. Do you have a limit? As in, a limit to how much you can drink before passing out? No. I just, just get disoriented to the point I'm effectively useless. But I never pass out. Maybe if I passed out, I wouldn't have to deal with all the shit that follows. And I always have to wait at least 24 hours before the effect pass. This, uh, one has to wonder why they gave all those human flaws to Lilim. I read something about that. It said that by giving Lilim the same kind of weakness as human ha halves, they would develop the same way humans do. So, that's why they also bite their lips randomly when eating? Seems like it. But it makes me wonder, exactly how it's anatomically correct are you? That's something I know, and you don't. <laughs> any of you want anything else to drink? Yeah, I want... Nothing. You're drunk enough as is. You're not my dad. You can't tell me what I can or can't do. Beatrice Albert, stop drinking right now. Yes, Mom. Now go sleep in the car. We are almost done here. But, Mom! Go. <laughs> Bye, bad nerder. Bye, Miss Betty. It actually worked. If I didn't know she wouldn't remember anything tomorrow, I'd be afraid of retaliation. Although, I'm curious. Why do you call her Miss Betty? It makes her sound like a teacher or something. Etiquette? I don't know. There's always something about her that makes it feel right to call her that. Maybe it's the forehead. I see. Well, I gotta get things ready. If you'll excuse me. Good luck. Wyvern lover! Hey! We're closing. Damn it! Well, everyone's safe in a cab. We are taking our leave, bartender. Thank you for providing such a great service on such short notice. That's my job. Um, you were interesting too? Well, thank you. I'll make sure to tell all our associates about the wonders of this place. Thank you, and please come again. We sure will. Send my regards to Miss Betty. Gladly. See you later, then. Bye. All done? Yep. Seems like we got some new regulars. Yeah, it'd be nice if they came back. Or that we're still here when they want to come back. You've been acting weird all weekend, boss. Are you okay? I am, but the bar is not. What do you mean? Well, I guess you have the right to know. The BTC sent me a message on Friday. Valhalla hasn't been bringing in much income these last few months, which means that we are at risk of being wiped off the map. Wow, an abrupt end. And that was interesting, though. That was a fun little prologue. I should have done that first. But then I guess I wouldn't have known how to play and would have just served Garbo drinks. <laughs> but no, that was super interesting, and I like that a lot.